Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we're going to be talking about bulk transport. What do I mean by bulk transport? Well, cells aren't just dealing with tiny molecules like oxygen or glucose. Sometimes they need to move large particles like proteins or even chunks of cellular debris. Since these molecules are too big to pass through the cell membrane by diffusion or transport proteins, they need to use specialized processes called exocytosis and endocytosis. So exocytosis and endocytosis are forms of bulk transport that we are going to delve into during this video. Let's talk about exocytosis first. Exo means out. So exocytosis is all about moving substances out of the cell. This is how the cell can secrete um, certain molecules outside of the cell that it has made inside of the cell. It involves packaging substances into vesicles within the cell, and this usually happens with the work of the Golgi apparatus. When those packaged vesicles fuse with the cell membrane, those substances are going to be released into the extracellular space. Exocytosis is vital for the secretion of hormones, neurotransmitters, and other substances that play key roles in cell signaling and communication. A great example of exocytosis is the release of insulin by the pancreas. So those cells of the pancreas can release insulin that they have made through exocytosis. When blood sugar levels rise, insulin is then going to be released from those cells through exocytosis to help regulate glucose levels. Now let's flip and talk about endocytosis. Endocytosis is the opposite of exocytosis. In endocytosis, substances are moving into the cell. So from the extracellular fluid or outside the cell, that fluid outside the cell, um, substances are gonna be moving from the outside of the cell now to the inside of the cell. The prefix endo means inside. In endocytosis, the cell's membrane is going to wrap around a substance outside of the cell creating a vesicle when it pulls it inside. There are different forms of endocytosis, such as phagocytosis, which is referred to as cell eating, where it is taking bigger substances, bigger molecules into the cell and wrapping around it, bringing it in. An example of phagocytosis is when different immune cells like macrophages can actually engulf and digest invading bacteria that comes into the body. They are using phagocytosis. There is also pinocytosis, which is referred to as cell drinking. This is bringing smaller molecules in, things like ions that are surrounded by that extracellular fluid and it's pinched in in the same way with the cell's membrane and it comes in in a vesicle. There is also receptor-mediated um, endocytosis, and this is a very specific type of endocytosis. So in phagocytosis and pinocytosis, the processes aren't specific. The cell is just going to wrap around things that are on the outside of it, bring it in into this vesicle um, within the cell itself. However, in receptor-mediated endocytosis, specific things need to bind to those receptors, and when enough bind, then the cell membrane um, will invaginate, as you see here, and it will bring that inside the cell and pinch it off. So while all three of these are different types of endocytosis, receptor-mediated endocytosis is a very specific type of process. An example of receptor-mediated endocytosis is how cells take in cholesterol using LDL particles. This process uses receptor 
uh, mediated endocytosis because LDL particles are going to bind to the receptors on a cell membrane. That's going to then form vesicles around the LDL and those receptors, forming a vesicle and bringing that cholesterol inside the cell. Exocytosis and endocytosis are important in regulating the composition of the cell's internal environment and interacting with the external environment. These processes enable cells to communicate with neighboring cells, respond to environmental cues, and adapt to changing conditions. Both exocytosis and endocytosis are types of active transport as they require energy in the form of ATP. That wraps up our discussion on exocytosis and endocytosis, two opposite processes that help bring things in and take things out of the cell. So endocytosis, again, is going to bring things into the cell, and exocytosis is going to remove those things from the cell. Whether it's sending out important proteins or bringing in nutrients, these processes are essential for life as we know it. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe for more breakdowns of complex biology topics. And don't forget to comment below with any questions you may have. Thank you.